is the variable vane controller. It works as a big spring in here and a vacuum pot, uh, and it's just not pulling vacuum. So it, the diaphragm inside this is gone, um, but today I'm gonna pull that out and just make sure that I do get exactly the right one. Well, I definitely would not say that was easy. Here is the part that had to come off here. You can see it's got a very long thread on it. I don't know why that thread is also so long, probably for multi-car applications. However, it certainly does not need to be this long in this case. Um, I ended up taking the pipe off. So this is the boost side of the turbo. I took that off just to give me some space to get a ratchet down there as well. I'll show you why in a second. I also took the inlet side off, just all of this all of this uh, air filter and inlet just to get that out of the way to give me more space. I also just lifted the um, solenoid up out of, out of the way as well just to give me some more room. Fortunately, I was able to use just a standard quarter inch. Um, it's 10 mil, the nut on that is 10 mil. So I was able to use a quarter inch deep, um, but I did have to drill out. This one didn't actually pass all the way through. It had a tiny hole that passed through, so I had to drill that out at 6.5 millimeters. Um, then I was able to get that all the way up. Um, then I used a couple of adapters. So uh, let me find it here. Here it is here. So this is a quarter inch um, bit for screwdriver bits. So that's quarter inch hex. And I've got a little adapter for that quarter inch hex to quarter inch square drive. Um, so then I was able to, I had to slip, had to slip this up the thread first down in the, behind the turbo and then lift the, um, lift this little ratchet up underneath of that. I was able to hook that in and then um, it really wasn't mega tight. It, once I cracked it, I was able to actually remove that with my fingers all the way down the thread. So, um, yeah, pretty happy that I've got that off. Now I can just make sure that I absolutely get the right one. So um, we can see the part numbers on this, but also, I mean, it, it, looks, um, it looks fairly like the ones that you see on the internet. So I'm sure it won't be difficult to get. Seeing as um, I'm going to get a new one, this is not really repairable. I might actually cut this open and see what's failed on the inside. This is a position transducer. So basically, when you apply vacuum to this port here, it actually pushes this rod out in this direction. So this is some sort of linear variable differential um, device for measuring how far that rod's been pushed out. I guess it's a it's a, a positional indicator of where the veins should be. And then there's also obviously your desired boost and output boost as well and actual boost. So anyway, glad I've got that off. Now I can get a new one. Um, now I know how to fit it. So we should be all good. Oh, I did also check that the veins are operating properly. I was a little bit worried when I first started pulling that off because I was thinking that this vacuum would pull this rod, but it doesn't, it actually pushes it down. So even though I had these bolts out, I wasn't able to move this down to make sure the veins were actuating. But now that I've taken that off, it's freely moving. So that's really positive as well, because there is issues on some of these turbochargers that the, the veins um, become seized or um, not move easily. So apparently this turbo is only 40,000 kilometers old. Um, a bit of oil coming out of it as well um, but yeah let's hope it is a good one here's the turbo actuator that I bought off eBay it cost $83 delivered and it fitted perfectly I'll put a link in the description below of course just because we know we can buy a new unit doesn't mean I don't want to try and fix it myself or at least find out how it works, work out what went wrong and why. So I'm going to take you on that little 
investigation journey as well. So let's pull apart this unit and see what went wrong. So before I go and take the nut off the shaft here, I need to take some measurements so that when I put the new actuator on, I've just got a, a, a base to start from. I know I'm still gonna to have to adjust it, but it's always good to try and get it in roughly the right place before you start those adjustments. So I'm just measuring up the distance that nut is from the bottom of the mounting point. And a quick sketch up on the whiteboard, ready for the new actuator. Okay, so the overview of this is, this diaphragm is actually fine. The problem is when this vacuum um, should suck. So if this is sealed at the top and sealed at the bottom, it should form this, force this push rod to go out. So obviously that changes the vane on the turbo and also it actuates the, uh, the sensor, that linear ver variable differential transformer in there to give a, a position distance. So this, this uh, looks fine. This diaphragm, the blue one, uh, there's a spring, spring behind there, spring seat, and then there should be a seal in here. Um, what I've managed to do, if we pop that back out, <clears throat> it is difficult to, um, to see, but hopefully you can see there's a bit of a black line there. So there's actually a hole in that, um, in that diaphragm there. You can see I'm poking something through from that side. So that's our problem. Um, ultimately, it, it everything's repairable so you could pull that out and possibly find something like this from a brake reconditioner someone like that um, but uh, anyway I'm going to try and pull it apart a little bit further okay I can't seem to get this out so this is pretty much the end of the road I'm assuming this cup actually pushes over something to stop that from coming out so it's probably in the process of spot welding that in place it's holding all of that together so this part probably has a flange that comes around to this side so um yeah i can't get that apart any further without cutting it all apart it's not really much point so good to know though that um how it works and what the components are inside i'm really sorry i got the new actuator um, I was pretty excited to get it, of course. Um, checked it out. Looks like it's um, a, a bolt-in replacement, which is great. I was going to show the process of putting it in. I mean, really, it's the same as getting it out. It's fiddly, but uh, it's definitely achievable. Um, and I've actually done that. So there is one other thing that I want to show you that I did as well. So obviously, this is the old actuator. And you can see the top screw had some, uh, some thread lock on it. And then the actual arm that it clips through on for the VNT actuator. And then this lock nut comes up to here and there's some thread lock on that as well. So basically you've got this much thread 
that really serves no purpose other than possibly other than it helps you get the nuts on um, while this is basically so low down in underneath or beside the turbo it's difficult obviously to get onto that thread however i did um cut some off that so you can see there i've cut about 25 millimeters or one inch off that it still allows plenty of adjustment it's never ever going to be adjusted that low so the reason i did that is if you can picture this for example where that would be very difficult to get a deep socket on because you need to feed the socket from the bottom of the shaft but it's got to go more than halfway up the shaft to get onto the nut so if i reduce the length of this it makes it easier to get that deep socket underneath it and bring it up so that's really that's the only modification that i did so now we can go ahead and install the actuator Here's a really good diagram just to show how to remove the actuator. So those three bolts at the top are what hold it on. And then you've got A and B labeled there. They are the nuts that adjust the length of the rod effectively, or the, the, the VNT actuator adjustment is via those two nuts, A and B. Okay, so I'm just about to test the actuator. So I've connected a vacuum pump here um, onto the hose that works directly onto the vacuum pot of the, um, the actuator. And as I pull a vacuum, you should be able to see down there the rod moves down so if I pull that I've got there approximately 525 millimeters of mercury so that equals approximately 0.75 bar and the document <laughs> If you go to this forum link, you can download the PDF. It's really helpful and this is what I'm referencing. That when the rod is all the way down between 0.7 and 0.8 bar, the output of the positioning transducer should be between 0.65 and between 0.85 of a, of a volt. So when you release that vacuum, obviously that rod's gonna come up we should see the voltage between 3.3 and 3.9. So that's the test that we're gonna do using OBD11. And here's the reference from the PDF document. Okay, so what we need to do here, I'm connected at the moment to the OBD11 Bluetooth dongle. I need to go into engine, go down here to basic settings. That's fine and enter block number 120. Wait for that to load up. So it tells us that's the um, N75 adaptation. If we look down here, we can see here. So at the moment, uh, it's at rest. So I've released the vacuum from here. So we've got no vacuum at the moment. And I've got 3.268 but it should be actually th between 3.3 and 3.9, so that's not great. And then when I apply that vacuum, basically to fully open it, so I'll do that, I'll make sure that's fully open, we'll put 500, something like that. So now the rod is all the way down, and I'm getting 0.465, but it should be 0.76, so that's not great. So what I'm gonna do now, um, and I'm, the reason I'm doing this before I put all the intake and stuff back on is it's gonna give me a bit more access to get to that adjustment. So I'm gonna adjust that so that I get the appropriate readings. It's looking good so far. Right, so I've just adjusted it a couple of times. Now you can see I'm in rest 
position and I've got 3.572 which is definitely in between 3.3 and 3.9 so now we'll pull that vacuum so it's fully extended which is there so now the rod's fully extended and we've got 0.684 OBD 11 it actually doesn't show what the range of the voltage should be when the push rod is in that point so I'm just going to go and check that on the whiteboard to make sure that we are actually in range let's go and check what that's supposed to be okay so that needs to be somewhere between 0.65 and 0.85 So we are within spec. Point six eight four, full stroke, and three point five. At this point, I put everything back together and took it for a test drive. Funnily enough, I had exactly the same problem as when I very first got the car. But I found it pretty quick. I'd left the hose that I had the vacuum pump connected to. I didn't connect that back up to the vacuum block. So once I fixed that, we had boost. Uh, I did connect up OBD11 and I set up live logging. I looked at the require, requested boost and the actual boost and I logged that and they were both following each other very closely. And obviously the car drives brilliantly now.